Community is one of those words that seems to have sort of diffused itself into general discussion, mm. almost to the point of meaninglessness. Yeah. For your father, in those early days and onwards, what did community mean? It meant that people should meet on a level basis, and this is why the work, as well as worship um, and recreation and play, was so important, so that you could get an ambassador washing up with a bricklayer or a borstal boy, um, and you wouldn't know because they were just doing it together. Work is a great leveller. So if you're building a hut or making concrete, obviously the builders were better at it than the university lecturer, but they learned on the job, as it were. So this work, worship, study and play were fundamental, and it wasn't them and us. Mm. Um, everybody was sleeping in tents and this and huts and stuff like that. Um, and the importance of people finding meaning. In those days, everybody was a volunteer. Mm. So everybody had a job, whether it was washing the floor, cleaning the toilets, or washing up or whatever. And that was important because everybody began to feel necessary. The place couldn't work or run if you didn't do your little chore for the day, whatever it was. So a, a, a tremendous owning of the place came about. Now that could be a problem, and later on at times was a bit of a problem because those that came regularly and were on the weekly teams, some, there was a dangerous like cliqueism, being a bit cliquey. But nevertheless, if you're all needed to do a job, you feel needed. One of the most amazing things was we make our own bread here. And to get some teenager who's sort of feeling a bit useless and not very much, making bread for say 80 people and seeing their efforts at bread making used for lunch was a tremendous boost in morale and gosh, I did this. So the people feeling needed is such an important thing, so people don't feel needed. <laughs> the, the community obviously has grown in numbers and also in terms of its geographical reach. I wonder whether that has changed the relationship between maybe the more far-flung members of the community and those that you've referred to earlier perhaps are still forming the, mm. the sort of inner, inner core. Well, actually it's changed because now we're open all the time, we have to have people who are paid to run it because you couldn't do that on a weekly team basis. It's mm. just not possible. Mm. And because of out of season, we don't just have the, what I call the community members, we have other groups who come. Um, we have choirs, we have Buddhist groups, we have um, groups from parishes come down tremendous range of other people come and use our facilities and become community while they're there, um, which is why we have to have paid staff to make sure that you know, meals are cooked and the place is cleaned. And in fact, we don't on the whole get quite the numbers that we used to get in the very early days um, because people have more, um, more incentive to go abroad and, and do other things. So in the early days we were getting sometimes at a weekend over a hundred, which was pretty stressful. My father always said 60 was about the optimum mm -hmm. because otherwise people can't get to know each other mm -hmm. and this is a disadvantage. But still we do need volunteers and we have a, quite a lot of volunteers. Um, but that's something we have had to work through and, and look at. Um, that people don't, some people don't at first feel as involved as they might have done in the old days when mm. they had to work a bit harder. The, yeah. the community obviously is not a religious order, but I'm, I'm, I'm very much aware that um, members of the community who, who, who perhaps don't visit as much for whatever reasons are probably still very much aware of what is going on in Orthona now. You know, is it, is it time for a service at St Peter's or um, uh, mm. you know, 
we're talking now during fireworks weekend, you know. Yes. And, and I wonder whether do you still get that sense that, that that many members of the community who physically can't get here so often still have that sense of identity and that sense of association because of, if you like, the orthona year. Yeah. Yes, I think a lot do, and of course now with sort of social media, people phone each other on Sunday nights and Thursday nights. Um, one of our German members has um, a Zoom meeting, and people come and chat on that very regularly. Um, and of course, there's stuff on the website, um, so that it, it has sort of widespread. It's certainly, and certainly in Germany, there are groups who meet regularly um, during the year. Um, so that does go on, um, but of course, because we're open more often, people can get at different times of the year, not just at um, in the summer and Easter, which is what it used to be. Um, but I think, yes, that, that is still a, an important part of it. 